Hey guys, welcome back. This is the second lesson of the Infinity Course. And I want to dive a little deeper into the philosophical aspect of Infinity before we continue with um, the practices or the methods to realizing the Infinite One. So a good place to start is the very beginningless beginning, the very start. Where did it all start? It all started before time was created. And this might not make perfect sense, but awareness, in fact, is time. Consciousness is time. Time is consciousness. It is the very root of, it's the very cause of all of time. The presence that is, is itself the substratum of time. And so, before time was created, before there was awareness of any kind, infinity was unaware of itself. In a sense, you can say that awareness itself is a limitation. Awareness itself is a creation, and it is. Because it is, you see, because it's present, because it's aware, there is a function there, there is a presence there, there is something definable there, there's something observable there, something is happening. Therefore, in that sense, awareness cannot ever fully capture true endlessness, true infinity. Awareness itself is eternal. Awareness itself is, in a way, timeless, even though it's a substratum of all of time. In its original state, it does not experience any linear time. Nevertheless, the very act, so to speak, of beingness, the very act, the very fact that awareness is present, that it exists, implies that it has a limitation at its core, which is it has to be itself, right? So the infinite one, before awareness was generated of any kind, it was just pure infinity, pure infinite unity, pure indescribable unity, the one, therefore. Because infinity can only be one, it can only be a unity. If you think about it, multiplicity or separation is a finite idea. And in infinity, there cannot be a finite idea. Finite ideas can come from the infinite one, but if we're talking directly to and from and about the most original, the source that was never born, we are talking about an infinite unity, an infinite oneness. In that original state of infinite oneness, the infinite one was unaware of itself. The way to imagine this, or the way to grok this perhaps, is to visualize or imagine whatever comes up to you when I say, imagine an infinite vastness. Perhaps even space. Vastness is slightly better than space, but it will do. Infinite vastness, infinite space. If you want to take a real physical representation, you could take the space up there and simply Delete all the stars. Remove all objects from the equation, from the presence of infinite vastness or infinite space. No planets, no stars, no life forms, no creations, no movement. Infinite void, infinite vastness, endless nothingness, endless space. And as you engage in that visualization for a little bit, for a few minutes, and you get a sense, a better sense, a better feel for it or of it, then you can also see how in that space, if that is all that there is, no reference point whatsoever, no separation, no object, there cannot be the limitation of self-awareness. There is not yet self-awareness or the distortion or the creation of self-awareness. So at first, it's nothing but infinite unity unaware of itself. Now, and we're imagining, imagining it in terms of a space right now, a vastness, but it is not really a space. It is really the spaceless, timeless beyond space, before space was even generated. But you can, again, imagine it as a vastness, an infinite void, an infinite vastness, 
with no object and spend some time, quote unquote, being aware of that space, pretending to be that space. Imagine what it would be like to be that space before anything was ever generated whatsoever. And you can get a glimpse of how in its original state, infinity is not aware of itself because it's way too infinite to do that. It's way too undefined to do that. Since it is the infinite one and since it is the source of all that can possibly be, one of the things that can also possibly be is the desire for it to generate self-awareness, for it to get to know itself. And hence, from this infinite vastness, this infinite unity then arises free agency. And I've explained this, or I explained this somewhere else in the academy. But basically, the idea is that the first expression, the first distortion, the first creation out of this infinite unity is that of free agency, which is synonymous with awareness. But basically, why don't I say the first distortion is awareness is because awareness is already very known to us. It's very familiar. We know what it is. We have an image of it, but free agency, really the ability to move, the ability to choose, the ability to separate, the ability to discern, the ability to navigate the very core of the ability of freedom of movement period is what I call free agency. So out of infinite union, came the first very first creation, which was the ability to move. Now this does still not look like anything. It doesn't have a form. It doesn't have a body. It doesn't even necessarily have consciousness in the way that we know it. It's simply the ability to move, which then automatically comes with awareness. Awareness is what has the ability to move. Then out of this freedom, this ability to create this ability to generate now that the infinite one has generated an aspect of itself that has the ability to create, to generate, to choose, to manifest in a way, to be aware of. It can, from this stage onward, create whatever it wants. And then we end up with creation as we know it and every other creation as we don't know it. So the purpose of creation in that sense is driven by this first distortion, this first creation, this first expression, this first emanation from pure infinite unity that's unaware of itself. So this first awareness, so to speak, this first free agency now drives creation or drives all other forms, all other expressions of consciousness to do all kinds of different things, to express itself in as many ways as it can because its sole purpose the reason it has been born to begin with, free agency has come about to begin with, is to express and explore and reflect the infinite one in as many ways as it possibly can. Hence, we see so many different forms, so many different planets, so many different dimensions, so many different realms and realities and ways, even within one reality, to express oneself and to have different points of view and to have different reflections and reactions and experiences. All of this comes down to the infinite one desiring to know itself and therefore doing so through expressing itself. So I just want you to be aware of the fact that in its original state, the infinite one is not aware of itself and that you are the free agent, the bridge between the infinite one and creation that is able to reflect either creation and therefore also express the infinite one and always to an extent reflect back to the infinite one, whatever you're expressing or directly reflect back to the infinite one, its own infinite faceless face. In other words, you are at that center point, that mediating um, balance point where you can either reflect the infinite one directly or choose to reflect its creation and therefore indirectly, but still, perform your duty, which is to express and explore infinity in as many ways as it can. And so it continuously through the means that is you, that is the foundation of all that you are, which is the free agent that you are, which has generated the individuation that you are as well. So that very core of your free will, 
that ability to navigate and move and be aware of and choose is the um, is the gift that you are to the infinite one so I want you to feel worthy I want you to feel endless I want you to feel that your purpose of being is not just to be a physical body walking around a random universe bumping into things and learning as you go I want you to understand that you are the first emanation of the infinite and that in a very absolute sense you also are the infinite because in an infinite unity it doesn't matter what is expressed secondarily it will always all of its expressions will always be one in essence ultimately speaking so you are also the infinite one and that's part of what we're going to realize in this course that's what these methods or practices are going to lead you into is the understanding that you are the infinite unity the infinite oneness and to, to then benefit from that in terms of the peace that comes from that and the freedom and the realization and the ability to view things simultaneously that comes from that to understand the nature of reality as an infinite simultaneity of all that is and nothing that has ever been so um, for this week I would like you to simply ponder or this day depending on how long you take with this lesson I want you to simply ponder this imagination to state imagine infinite vastness with no reference point whatsoever and get to that sense of infinity infinite vastness and realize that it is infinite vastness with the potential for awareness but it is originally unaware of itself and then from that arises the ability to move and navigate and choose and be aware of things and that is the first identif identifiable form of who you are or what you are and from that base awareness everything else flows every other individuation separation um, experience then flows so have fun